I would like to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about shading, line weight, and general drawing styles. So let's take a look at lines first. So lines can stop actually at a line. They can also overshoot or for example here, cross each other. But what you really have to be careful about is, does it make sense? So for example, here in the back, going to the vanishing point, uh, it makes the object like coming towards you. Down here, this doesn't look too bad either. Here with these two lines, uh, maybe, a, maybe a little bit too much. So what about I cut this down a little bit and there, yeah, okay. Here, I don't know is, if this is actually really useful. So there, I will just, just remove it. So they can be there, but try, try to limit them so that they do not look like an object feature. So a feature, let's take a look at this. So you see this line and then there, well, I could actually say, hey, what's going on there? And um, let's actually make this a little bit smaller and just erase this area there. And then we just draw a straight line up. Oh, look, so there's actually now a definition that tells us that the surface is not curved the same way, but actually comes up and then actually is horizontal. So here, obviously, I made it very clear, but before, mm, uh, it was unsure. And if I remove this, now it is definitely sure what we see. So even there. So again, you don't have to clean everything perfectly up. They can overshoot or overlap a little bit, but try to prevent that things could be misread as an object feature. So for the next one, line weight. So this is just a pretty boring drawing. Let's go ahead and add some line weight to it. So let's see what we have. Uh, maybe something like this and just draw it along the bottom here. Okay, and let's take a look. Instantly, you will see that this functions a little bit like a drop shadow on the shadow between the object and the ground plane and grounds it a little bit. But maybe this is a little bit too too heavy because it contrasts quite strongly to the rest. So let's say, well, if no, ground lines are too too strong, well, what about we just do the rest as well for the outline? So I'm working on the contour lines there. And here, let's do do this one. Now this actually f works like separating the whole drawing out of the, the canvas, but maybe it's too strong still. So let's say, well, okay, what happens now if we maybe mm, lower this a little bit and then actually the inside lines here, we also give a little bit of drawing definition. So maybe there and maybe there. Uh, you see, now you perceive the proportions of the whole box quite nicely, but because these lines don't have much definition, so the opening, it feels like secondary. And now you have to ask yourself, well, could I maybe develop a system which is logical to maybe help it a little bit? So I could say, well, if this is maybe a line that casts a shadow, just this line, I ink a little bit. And then 
I will do the same with only this line and the rest I will maybe keep out. So you see now there, there starts to be a play between the different lines and maybe with a little bit less pressure and size I will do this line again. So it's all about hierarchy technically speaking and there and maybe yeah yeah I can leave it this way. The bottom line actually right now doesn't really look like much anymore so it it doesn't really stand out so let's go back and give this a really thick one maybe I will just outline this two times with a parallel stroke so that it's obvious that maybe this should be a, a shadow or something there huh? doesn't look too bad works quite well we can actually also um, for example take a marker okay and now I will just quickly put something here in the background there based on how you want to draw either place all the marker strokes nicely and neatly next to each other and it's okay when they actually slightly overlap it's very difficult to make it perfectly parallel freehand and you can also if you want to maybe just do it this way and just maybe fade it out uh, so it looks a little bit more explorative and then obviously you now we have to to go back and clean up this area so in if I would work in in real life with markers either I would make myself a small template a hard edge to draw over because I can't just marker and then erase or um, I actually would cut this drawing out do this marker background and then glue this drawing with the white paper over it and you see that this this detail actually works quite well to to draw attention to the curvature and the shape and again it's all about color contrast now it's saturated nothing on it so it's working with positive and negative effect so don't do this necessarily only to make something look interesting there has to be always a function to it so um, do this only to a detail you want to draw attention to if there is not an area to draw attention to well and just don't do it right now I'm going to clean this up a little bit there let's see I like this the small detail now that's too distracting there it's a bit gone there well, also nice and clean so two different styles either loose explorative or just you can clean everything nicely up little tip also if you um, have two pieces of paper and you can push it nicely down then you can draw draw over it carefully quite quickly and you will get a similar effect just experiment a little bit we can however also employ for example hatching Let's see okay yeah that's a good good value so let me zoom in a little bit and then pick a direction and really be consistent with it this is what bugs me the most when I see hatchings and they all go into different directions and there's no no real um, let's say reason behind it because then the hatching lines will look more like a pattern or structure and start irritating you now we can just erase this a little bit there so I mentioned before well pick a direction so it makes sense I hatched this area I can't really hatch the same with the bottom so let's say I actually do something here
and try to get the lines close as possible. They can overlap a little bit. They don't necessarily have to stop on the line. When they get very close to the line from a distance, it will look like that they are actually on the same or that they're stopping on the line. It's all about illusion. So, and then um, let's maybe here do these lines and then you will quickly see what I mean with all these different directions actually become <laughs> quite quite confusing. So there's just too much too much going on. So what if I say oh, it's a nice idea, it just doesn't work out, so I just do it this way. Yep, maybe that's enough. Now with with this hatching I, I identify that there is a surface, a flat one. Or maybe let's go back uh, here. Let's do one more quick run. I do this really fast so the video isn't too long, which is why the lines are not as perfect. Keep that in mind. So not too bad, but the problem is with that, it's very difficult to, to see actually the wall edges. So I need to bring back a little bit of definition so they stand out a little bit and are not too, um, yeah, don't blend together with those hatching lines. So you see mm, this, that is, didn't really work out well. Let's pick a different different direction. What about we do it this time this way? And again, keep the direction. Yeah, maybe. What about a little bit strength to there so it pops out better? Yeah, but actually this will look better just this way. So it's really not, not a question of having hatched all different lines. Just pick an idea, pick a direction, and then be consistent. So with consistent, I actually can do the same maybe on this edge because I'm kind of like saying with the hatching, I identify certain type of faces I only see from a certain angle. Oh, maybe a little bit more clean up there. See, that actually makes sense. Vertical seen from that angle, vertical seen from that angle. Don't do anything with the front or so. One last tip about readability of surfaces, specifically when things are very, very round or organic, they can be hard to read. So to help the eye, you can actually employ and put down mesh lines, obviously best at the center of a surface. And then now if I sketch this one over uh, to flat, yeah, uh, beginning was good and was terrible. And uh, this is maybe okay. So these, these lines really help you to better understand what's going on. And then here, this line is incorrect and to the vanishing point. So it might actually maybe look like this. And this one I have to clean up. Let's do this line again. There. Now they, they help you in feeling the shape. Because the problem is we describe a three-dimensional volume just with lines. <laughs> Uh, not really much shading. Currently, we don't work with markers. So as long as the object isn't very easy to recognize, doesn't have hard edges or so, it's going to be a problem specifically when things are very roundish or so. And then actually, these mesh lines really help a lot understanding what's going on. So I could, for example, say here, this line goes over, goes to there. So then this one goes down, down, so plus there roughly, and then 
bring this one over there a little bit of extra and that's it it doesn't have to be more if you do too much then it becomes textural or distracting and the viewer rather stares onto that then just notices the line and understand them as a helper to read your surface